we're going to take an introductory look at the ANOVA test in what is specifically called a single factor one way ANOVA. The ANOVA test is used when we're comparing several different means and we want to know if they're equal to each other. If you remember several chapters ago we looked at comparing two means to each other by using a t-test. When there's more than just two means though we start to lose power in our test and so we need to switch over to the ANOVA test to avoid making an alpha error. So the hypothesis test for several means, the ANOVA, what it's really doing is testing if at least one mean is different than the rest of the means. In other words, our null hypothesis is going to be that the first mean is equal to the second mean, which is equal to the third mean, which is equal to the fourth mean, which is equal to however many means there are that we're interested in comparing. It might be 3, 4, 5, or 12, or 20. The alternate hypothesis, though, is a little bit different because the alternate hypothesis, what we're trying to prove, is not that all of the means are different, but we're just trying to prove that at least one mean is different. And if we end up rejecting the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative, we are saying that at least one mean is different, but we don't actually know which mean that is, and it would require further statistical analysis, which is beyond the scope of this course, but we're just going to look at whether or not we can prove that all the means are not the same, or do we fail to show that at least one is different. In order to do the calculations for the ANOVA test, we are going to use the Excel Data Analysis Tool Pack. The way we're going to do that is we are going to first go to the Data tab. We'll click the Data Analysis button. And then we will select the ANOVA single factor then all we need to do is select the data and then we can click the OK button when we do that it's going to give us two tables of information the first table it gives us will give all the means and variances for the individual variables. Then it will also give us a second table that is going to give lots of information including the degrees of freedom for the numerator, the degrees of freedom for the denominator, the test statistic F, and the p-value. Those are going to be the ones that we care about for our analysis. So let's take a look at an example and see if we can run an ANOVA test for several means. There are four sororities that took a sample of members to see if the GPAs are the same or not. At the alpha equals 0.05 level. So here's the data. Sorority A had GPAs of 2.17, 1.85, 2.83, 1 1.69, and 3.33. Sorority B had GPAs of 2.63, 1.77, 3.25, 1.86, 
and 2.21. Sorority C had GPAs of 2.63, 3.78, 4.00, two point fifty five and two point forty five and sorority D had GPAs of three point seventy nine three point forty five three point oh eight two point twenty six and three point eighteen And here all the sororities have the same number of people in each sample. However, that is not a requirement for the ANOVA test. They could all be different sizes as well. Running through the same six steps that we always run through for a hypothesis test, first we have to define the hypotheses. Our null hypothesis is that the average GPA of all four sororities is exactly the same. The average of sorority A is equal to the average of sorority B, which is equal to the average of sorority C, which is equal to the average of sorority D. For our alternate hypothesis, is going to be that at least one is different. We don't know if it's higher or lower. We don't know which one is different. We don't know if they're all different. We just want to know, is at least one different? If we were to draw a picture of this solution, we know for our picture F distribution is going to be a right tail test because the F distribution always puts us in the right tail for the ANOVA. And then we can calculate our test statistic. Our F. And this is where we're going to go over to Excel. I've copied the data here into Excel. In order to calculate the statistics for my ANOVA, we're going to go to the Data tab, over to the Data Analysis button, and then we're going to go to the Single Factor ANOVA. should be the first one on the list, and click OK. First thing I'm going to do is select my data, only selecting the numbers, and then click OK. This table is going to give me lots of information. First table here tells me my four variables, columns 1, 2, 3, and 4. It tells me how many there were, their sum, their means, and their variances. What's really going to be interesting to us, though, in the ANOVA, the second table, I've got the degrees of freedom for the numerator, the degrees of freedom for the denominator, my test statistic, and my p-value. Those are going to be the values I'll copy over to my paper on the other screen. For my test statistic off Excel, we found out it was 2.23. And then finally, my p-value, which came from Excel as well, was 0.1241. This leads to a decision where I look at the fact that my p-value was 0.1241, my alpha was 0.05, because my p-value is bigger than my alpha, we are going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. This leads to my interpretation. The interpretation always focused on the alternative hypothesis. This time we failed to get it. We failed to reject the null hypothesis. So we can say there is not sufficient evidence at the alpha equals 0.05 level to conclude that at least one mean is different that at least one sorority has a different GPA than the rest. And that's how we can do a hypothesis test for several means using the ANOVA and the analysis tool pack on Excel.